I'll start by telling you a few things about me. I'm 18 years old and live in northern Canada, in two different homes. One is with my father, who lives right in the middle of 222 acres of woods. We've got but a single neighbor, who is situated about a kilometer away. My second home is with my mother. She lives on the edge of a city, close to the woods, and the main shopping center. The story is split into three parts, and believe me, it may sound crazy, but I swear, all of this is true. The first part of the story starts at my father's house. I'd often go for walks in the woods. It was peaceful and quiet. I'd always bring my three dogs for protection, a German Shepherd and two Australian Shepherds. Nothing ever happened in the woods. There was the occasional sighting of bears and we found quite a few lynx tracks, but nothing out of the ordinary. Until, something started watching me from the woods. A black figure of sorts. At first, I thought it was just my paranoid mind playing tricks on me, so I shrugged it off. A few days passed since I first felt the strange watching presence. It was a cold day out. The sun was gone and the wind came from the north making it even colder. Though it was around noon, and it was time for me to bring the dogs out for a walk. I brought them down to the road that leads to my house. Nobody was around and it was silent all over except for the wind blowing through the tree leaves. I was calm, but then, it felt like I was being followed. Of course my dogs were following me, but this feeling was dark. I continued, it eventually turned back to go home. Everyone was gone so I arrived to an empty house. As I was about to bring the dogs into their kennel, I noticed one of the Aussies was frozen in place. He was staring into the woods. I tried to get his attention, but he would not budge. I walked over to him, pat his head. He only growled, but not to me. He growled to whatever was in the woods. The dog was pacing, tail tucked between his legs and ears held back. That made me feel a little uneasy, since I had been feeling watched or followed during the walk. It also meant I wasn't the only one who felt it. I decided to be safe and locked the door when I was inside. I'd like to say this feeling left after a while, but now, it only became more frequent. I had to lock and cover my windows at night because it felt as though someone was peering through them. I told people about it, especially those I lived with. They'd tell me it was a bear or maybe some ghost. A few even mentioned that it could be a stalker. I knew it was neither of these things. It just didn't feel right. Fast forward to about three months after the first occurrence. It's September, and the weather has begun to get colder. I was outside with my dogs cleaning some skulls I had recently gotten from a trapper. I was just minding my own business, all of my family members were gone, so I was left alone again. Then, I went near the forest and felt the dark presence again. It was so strange. I just couldn't shake it off as nothing. Scared, I went inside and decided to make myself some food in the comfort of my home. The fear left, and I felt safe again, until I heard the dreadful sound coming from the woods outside. It sounded like a man screaming, a deer howling in pain, in the low growl of a bear, all at once. It was the scariest thing I've ever heard in my life. I checked all the doors and ran to the second story of the house to hide. Not sure why I felt so much fear, since I heard nothing after that. But I called a relative, and they told me I was just hearing things. That night, I could barely sleep. I was afraid of whatever this thing was, was going to come inside. I kept seeing things in the shadows of the trees, after this incident. It was hard to ignore. Eventually, I went to live with my mother in the city. I was there for a better chance at a job. I also had some friends to reunite with there. Once I moved, I met up with my childhood best friend. She and I decided to take a long walk in the chilly temperatures of the night. We talked and talked. Nothing happened until about 11.30. We were crossing the street when I heard the same exact sound, but much louder coming from the woods down the road. I was terrified. My friend though 
paid no attention to it. We continued walking, but I was a little more paranoid than before, just waiting for something to jump out after me. An hour passed and we had to split ways. She went home and I did too. I had some instrumental music playing on my phone to keep me calm. But obviously, that didn't last long. Of course, something had to happen in the dead of night while I was alone. As I walked in the streets, I heard a baby scream. But it didn't sound normal. It was a horrifying, distorted scream. I looked in the direction of the sound and thought I saw someone there. My feet moved faster than before, trying to get me home. Then I heard another scream, much scarier than the first. I ran for it. That might not have been the best decision, but it was instinctive. Suddenly, I heard feet hitting the pavement It felt like something or someone was chasing me. I looked back quickly and thought I saw a large black figure coming, but it only lasted several seconds till I saw nothing. The shouts and screams did not stop though. I finally got home, but I realized the door was locked and couldn't get inside. Unfortunately, those screams continued. After many calls and pressing the doorbell, my stepfather opened the door. I was a hyperventilating mess, but I got through it. I'm very spiritual and I've been told by many mediums or spiritual leaders that I am a beacon for bad spirits. I assumed that it was a bad spirit, but I remember reading about Wendigos, a creature that is apparently connected to me in some ways that are unknown to me. I did research again and deeply believe that whatever followed me is still watching me. I'm not sure if it's a Wendigo, but it could be. Some acquaintances agree that it is quite possible. Now I'm just waiting for my next encounter with it, and I'm left wondering, what does it want, and what will it do next? Before I start this story, I should probably give you a little description of the place and myself. The area where this took place was out in a small farming village. There are basically sections of woods and farmland. On this occasion, the section of woods I was in had three defined barriers. To the north was an old railroad track. On the south and west was an open farmer's field. The east basically led to a denser block of trees. You'd eventually come to a road about a mile away if you didn't get lost. As for myself, while I wasn't a hunter, I always had a good sense of direction. Even when I couldn't see the sun or had any other guidelines, I was extremely comfortable with being alone in the woods and not afraid of going to hike in the dark. I found it peaceful, actually. They still do. But I'm more observant now, if that makes any sense. I also don't scare easily, and I don't go into a panic too often. Finally, I am also somewhat observant to the spiritual world, having seen and felt entities before this. So, to begin my story, the day started like any other day on a winter afternoon. I thought that I would go out to explore some patches of woods that I mentioned before. I always found it intimidating, but being a young kid and having explored everything in the area, this was to be one of the new places I would map out. So. I set out with bare minimum gear, really just an extra set of gloves and my favorite hiking stick. I knew there were still a few hours of daylight left, and I figured this wouldn't take too long, so I didn't think I would need too much more than that. When I first entered the patch of woods, everything was still and noisy. I could hear squirrels, birds, and the wind in the trees. Seeing as it was my first time, I stuck close to the border walking along the length of the field. Eventually, I came to the southern border and noticed a few interesting rock piles and I went to investigate. That's where I made my first mistake. I was not going back the way I came. I was in my explorer mode at this point and wanted to see everything, so I decided to go back through the heart of this wood. As I got farther into the heart of the woods, I noticed that several things were starting to become off. All the noises seemingly died down. At the time, I rationalized that as I was the predator, so all the animals quieted down for me. Now, I'm not so sure. The other off thing was that I had some sense that I was being watched. It felt like from a distance though. The final thing was that I noticed when I tried to backtrack, going back was harder than going forward, 
almost as if I was being elect somewhere. I checked my internal compass, as I don't get lost and haven't except for that time, which indicated the direction I was going was north, and strongly north of that. As I was walking along, I could still feel the gaze of this thing, but it seemed closer now. Looking behind me revealed only trees. I continued on despite the fact that the area I was in didn't look like the area close to the railroad tracks. What I didn't know was that I was heading towards the deep patch of woods where it would be difficult to find someone. Suddenly, I felt the thing move closer still. There was no noise, and I tried to say it was all in my head where a hunter was messing with me. But what didn't help was the fact that whatever this thing was, it was either so silent I couldn't hear it, or it wasn't something physical. I could feel this thing increase its pace. At this point, the trees up ahead thinned out and I came into a field. It took me a few minutes to realize where I was and quickly made an adjustment to my course. I felt the thing again increase to my speed, narrowing down the gap between it and myself. They lunged deep into the railroad tracks, the northern border, and all the sounds came back. I could hear wildlife again, kids screaming at a nearby pond, and farther off I could hear vehicles. However, I still felt the eyes glaring dackers at me, just out of sight in the denser woods. It felt evil, the nasty energy radiated off whatever it was, but it would not show itself nor did it step foot into the railroad tracks. All on my way home, I still felt it following on inside of the woods, till I came to civilization, and it seemed to turn and leave. Asked to say what it was, I cannot say. I have experienced a similar feeling two places since then. Once at a cemetery, and the last at an asylum in Ohio. I hesitate to say it was a physical creature, as I never saw or really heard anything, but I did feel it. Looking back now, I'm wondering if it was possibly something that thought I was up to no good on its turf, and maybe it was purposely trying to scare me off, but why chase me deeper into the woods? I haven't been back to that area since and I don't plan on going back anytime soon. Behind the local college in my area, there are some beautiful woods. A deep, rushing creek runs through it. It has a little bit of a valley, and it's a literally paradise. There is a magical quality there, and even a little tree spirit that I always visit and leave a little tribute to. My bestie and I are avid harvesters, and the woods behind the college literally have everything. I've even found berry patches that aren't usually in the area and all the local herbs and medicinal plants that you need. It's really amazing. Several years ago, we were cranberry picking in the fall. Now I'm not really good at keeping my bearings, so I basically just went wandering through the woods with my nose in the berry patches and enjoying spending the time with my friend. Sometimes we are on the trails and sometimes we would break trail through the brush and forest to forage and wander. It's a small slice of woods in between two major roadways with the college and residential areas at opposite ends, so the chances are getting lost are impossible, unless you are a total dunce. So I wasn't worried about getting lost where we were. We rounded up a hill, and there was a sort of clearing at the crest, with nothing but a tree sitting in the middle there right by the path. Now, it is a spruce tree, and spruce trees can either grow straight, or if there are upheavals in the sill, they can curve in weird ways. This tree was curved into a reversed S shape, but instead of it looking like a natural growth, it looked like the tree had been twisted violently into an unnatural shape. I really can't describe it better than that. I grew up in spruce forest, and I've never seen a tree that I thought looked like it had been purposely warped like that. As I walked up the path towards the tree, I suddenly heard a ringing in my ears that intensified with every step taken closer to the tree and when I was less than 10 feet away from it, I got a sharp pain above my right eyebrow that felt like a red-hot needle stabbing me. It was overwhelming, but as I walked away from the tree, the pain and ringing subsided. 
being the type of person I am, we got rather curious and started walking back towards the tree, and the ringing starts getting louder, and the pain happens in my head. Okay, so despite my experiences with the paranormal, I am a natural-born skeptic. So I called out my friend, asked her to come over and tell me if she noticed anything. She also said she got the ringing in pain. It was really weird. We talked about it at a safe distance for a bit and decided to leave the area as we were getting a really bad feeling about the tree. That night, we both had really awful nightmares that we were lost in the woods, being blood-soaked in some sort of battlefield and being chased by his zombies and all sound really weird but it was all really freaky. This year, we talked about it again, and we both vividly remember that tree. We've also never wandered into that particular corner of the woods again. What we both agree on is that there's a malevolent energy contained in that tree, and something really horrible must have happened there. I have a friend who practices magic, and I may take him out there to try to cleanse the energy, but I honestly am a bit afraid to be in that corner of the woods ever again. This happened on the 30th of December, 2013, during the hours of 2.30 a.m. and 4 a.m. I would like to stress that what I express in this story is not of imagination or of games, but something evil and mysterious myself and two friends had encountered. I would like to note that we were under the influence of weed, however, nowhere near the point in which it would affect our ability to tell reality from fiction. Not to mention, I have been smoking for years, so I could handle myself. Anyway, it was a fairly quiet and dark night. I and two friends, we'll call them M and C, had been planning on going out to let off some fireworks near a park near C's house. I would like to stress that C lives right in front of a very mysterious open and endless forest just behind a residential area. We had entered the forest numerous times before. Out of all the mysterious and unquestionable evil experiences we had shared there, this was the one that made us want to seek out what have been seeing, hearing, and feeling. Following this experience, we have encountered many weird and unknown things from this forest. From two mysterious brightening little red dot meters in front of us disappearing and appearing constantly, to the sound of footsteps being distorted all around us, and also unknown carving-like images and trees although none quite as blanket and direct as what we saw that morning. We had all decided to head down to the park as we were eager to finally let off the fireworks. As we initially started walking down, say about a hundred meters from the entrance, I could see a sudden change in facial expression on C. When confronted, he would deny feeling worried or anything and would keep stressing that he was keen to see the fireworks. We approached the entrance when I noticed that both C and M had mysteriously gone quiet. Nothing was said, and we entered the forest. As we were walking, we noticed that bats had constantly been trying to swoop at us, and it was as if there was a never-ending amount of them. We decided to have a quick stop for our cigarettes, and me and C sat down in a walk. The one thing that still brings goosebumps down my spine is the fact that someone as loud and cheerful as M had not spoken a word, and instead of sitting down with us, turned his back to us and just kept looking out into the bushes and trees, as if he was observing something. When I asked what was wrong, he simply replied that we needed to take a piss and I dismissed it as anything out of the normal. This is when things turned very eerie. We all decided to hurry up and get out of the woods and to the park as soon as possible. As we all started to get a very weird feeling, a feeling as if we were being watched by something or someone that really did not appreciate our presence. The next part of the path we took is somewhat of a sharp and blind bend in which you were not able to see anything past it until you were actually on it. I and C had been in front the whole time, and M a few mirrors behind us, still very quiet. It was when we had just stepped foot on the blind path that we saw it. It began at the very corner of my eye. A blinding bright light appeared which lasted a split second, as if it was diminishing. The face and outline of something or someone appeared merely a meter in front of us. At this moment, not one word was said. Instead, all three of us were frozen in shock. 
I suddenly had the urge to run as far away from this thing and not look back. The second I started running, C and M followed. Now, I would just like to note that I am a religious person, and that throughout this experience the Lord's Prayer was constantly playing back in my mind. Although, this was not intentional. It was as if my own mind was doing it without even me noticing. We had finally gotten to the entrance. Throughout what seemed to be a merely five-minute sprint, the whole way back endlessly and endlessly, the amounts of bats were constantly following us and swooping right behind us. It was when we exited, and all tried to regain our thoughts and breath, that I saw the absolute look of fear on C&M's face. I'm not denying that I hadn't just gone through one of the most terrifying sprinches in my life, but the look I seen on specifically C's face was something I could not explain with words. We all finally decided to walk away from the forest along the outskirts path and find a suitable quick area we could let off the fireworks and go back home. These next experiences are what solidified to us that what we saw was no mere illusion. Something was following us and wanted us far away from there. After 10 or so minutes following the path, we found a spot. As I was walking down towards it, I felt a sudden pull as if something was making or wanting me to follow the direction into the woods. This was quickly dismissed and ignored. This is our last mysterious experience of the night before we decide to leave. As I and M were sitting down ready to light the fireworks, we noticed C standing near a meter or so behind us. We asked what was wrong with him, and he said these very words. I can sense the fear in a voice which I had never heard C use before. And after a minute of questioning C, what the hell he was on about, we heard one of the scariest sounds or screeches I have ever heard in my life. The sound is embedded. This was no normal creature sound. In fact, there was absolutely nothing behind us, as we were in an illuminated area and had clear vision all around us. The sound of a grunt, an angry growl, and loud and irregular breathing patterns could be heard all around us. Quite frankly, I'll cut the bullshit. It sounded like a demon. It was from then, we all had enough, and rushed back home. None of us have been able to get our heads around this experience. Back home, he said that he felt a genuine presence of evil, and that when we were standing up, when he had been sitting down, he had seen a large black figure in the distance. We stayed up the whole remainder of the morning, trying to figure out what it was, when ultimately, it was denounced as an evil mist. About three years ago, I struggled severely with depression and suicidal thoughts. Those thoughts later manifested in a plot. I stay up at night thinking about how I want to go out of this world. I thought about pills, sledding my wrist, all the cliche stuff you see in the movies. Although, I eventually decided upon a slow bleed method. I constructed a plan to make a two-hour drive from my house to the Inyo National Forest after work on a Friday and get lost. The plan was simple and stupid. I tried to survive as long as possible until something killed me, be it dehydration, more fatigue, or whatever else nature had to throw my way. I ordered some survival essentials on Amazon, packed a bag, and left as planned. I don't know what made this slow bleed idea so seductive, but my mind was set to it. I had no idea where I was going, but that drive felt like I was 10 again and on my way to Disneyland with my parents for the first time. I felt so overjoyed and relieved. I got there, parked my car behind some bushes and started walking. It was about 5 o'clock and the sun was falling quickly. Bad planning on my part, so I started running, deeper and deeper into the forest. I would run, then tire, so I walk a while, then run again, and I repeated this process for about 3 hours. I stopped at a clearing in the trees. It was around a little patch of mostly dead grass and leaves. I pitched my tent, unrolled my sleeping bag, and fell asleep, happy as can be. 
The next morning was far less tranquil. However, I woke up feeling like I had a terrible hangover, and I had no idea where I was or how I'd gotten there for at least five minutes. I began breathing rapidly and started jogging in random directions trying to retrace my steps. I ended up getting even more lost and separating myself from my gear and tent. I tried telling myself that this is what I wanted, but for some reason, I knew it wasn't anymore. I remember repeating no choice over and over again. That was a really cold night. I tried doing push-ups to keep me warm, but that hardly lasted. I tried singing Vienna by Billy Joel, for I was too cold and my teeth kept chattering. Although the cold was nothing compared to the fear. Every falling leaf or trickling sound of the stream was a vicious predator in my mind. There was a point where I couldn't tell whether I was shaking from fear or the cold or a mixture of both. Finally, the morning came and I slept through most of the day in the ground, my back to a fallen tree stump. I woke at around 3 p.m. and once again I panicked. I began jogging in a seemingly random direction once again, till I hit the road I came on. That feeling of relief was something I would never be able to explain. It humbled me, yet lifted me up. I walked up the road into a very nice old man and a big black truck pulled over to see if I needed help. I told him I was hiking and got lost. He drove me up the road to my car and I drove home. That weekend changed everything for me. I have never had a suicidal thought again, and I got the help I needed to do with my depression. This isn't very much of a survival story, but the whole experience changed my point of view on life and self-worth. I'm still working on constructing a suitable life for myself, but whenever I'm discouraged or I want to quit, I think back to that night in the forest, and after a quick shudder I realize just how much life means to me. It was a stupid plan but I'm glad it was. I may not have survived a slightly more elaborate one.